Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the Will It Run series on my 1972 Cushman Traxster off-road vehicle. In the last video, I did some diagnosis, put a good hot battery in it, got the thing turning over on the key switch and uh, found out that the coils were miswired and that the points were not uh, opening and closing. It appears that we've got a dead short on the wire coming down to the points, which is down here. Sorry for the bad angle, but the sun is uh, going to get you if I put the camera anywhere else. What we need to do today is clean up the uh, points, run a new wire up to the, uh, to the coils, give everything under here a good uh, cleaning up, get rid of some more of those uh, mouse house remnants that you can see there, blow out around the cooling fins on the engine, and uh, then we'll see if I can spark this thing up. This is the wire that comes up off of the points. As you can see, the uh, insulation is uh, pretty poor. And even the wire strands are starting to uh, collapse. Um, I imagine this has been exposed to a fair amount of heat over the years running right across the top of the uh, engine like that. What I'm going to feed down in there is actually aircraft wire. Tefzel, which is a uh, Teflon derivative wire. I'm going to run this across the top of the engine similar to how the original was run. Tefzel run across. This here is the hole that the ignition coil wires came through and also you can see the remnants of the uh, coil wire. If you look way in the back of the hole, I'm hoping I can grab it with a pair of small needle nose pliers. The wire that I've fed down is uh, in behind those yellow ones. Probably not something that you guys can see, but that would be a, a good place to start. There's our nice new ignition wire. I'll have to see if I can find a uh, nice small ring terminal that will fit in there and replace the remnants of uh, that mess. Unfortunately, my nice ratcheting crimpers have uh, grown legs. I suspect they are uh, out at the airport where I work on my airplane, considering they are aviation crimpers. We'll make do with these though. We'll use these to strip the wire. I like using these because they shear the uh, insulation off without actually uh, damaging any of the strands. Take a ring terminal, go on the, uh, the red size on the crimp. Give it a tug to make sure it's not come, gonna come off of there. Put our little screw back in and reconnect to the point assembly. We'll have to adjust all that wiring so that it doesn't get tangled in the flywheel. Either get worn through the insulation so that we have a short or tangled up and broken off. Snug that up. Everything looks good. We do have a rubber grommet that needs to go around all the wires. Shove back in that hole so that we don't short out against the outer edge. That should give us a, a decent connection for the points. One of the videos that I've watched says that we want to make the keyway here exact opposite to the points. Which is pretty close to that right now. Let me move it just a little bit more. The way I move that is there's a, uh, a fan on the drive shaft that goes to the front transmission. Here we have our flywheel assembly and we need the, uh, the cam to line up with the keyway so that uh, it stays attached to the back of the flywheel. We don't want to lose that cam, get it in there and get it broken. I think I'm going to grab a little bit of scotch Bright. There's some rust on that crankshaft snout. And if we clean that up, the next time we have to take this flywheel off, uh, might be a little bit easier. Let me take care of that. I'll bring you guys back. And although they look really good, I don't think there's going to be a problem. We're here. We got it all apart. It's a bit of a pain to do. Let's put a file across these points. And uh, make sure that there's no grunge on there. It look good and clean. I need to line up the keyway for the cam, the keyway for the flywheel, and gently put things on so they stay lined up. You need to make sure that it is uh, that the cam isn't holding the flywheel off and give it kind of a rock 
side to side, back and forth. Everything looks good. It appears to be seated all the way. Our lock washer and our big nut. Now there's a hole in the edge of the flywheel over here that's just about perfect for a 3.8 socket extension. We'll bring it up against the casting in the motor and that'll make easy work of uh, tightening up this big nut. And I'm sure there is an official torque spec for this nut, but I don't know what it is because I don't have a service manual for this yet. I'll make sure it's good and snug. Mm. We'll try to put the starter belt back on. I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on this engine until I verify that it's going to be a good runner. A common modification people make to these is to convert them over to a four stroke and it's possible that might happen. That is our start belt. Before we get too much further carried away here uh, bolting stuff on I'm going to stretch out an air hose and hopefully we can get in here kind of blow some stuff out a little bit. The tricky part with the uh, belt tension on the starter is that it uh, has to be tight enough that it grabs but loose enough that it can slip so that we don't have the starter engaged all the time. That puts us back basically where we were. I see a mistake that I have made. The governor belt has to go on after the uh, cooling fan shroud. And some fuel lines to get out of the way. That's kind of sort of what we need. We got a bunch of these small flathead screws that need to get put in. Let me bring you guys back when I've got the, uh, the flathead screws back in place. So we'll do a little test. See if it turns over with the key. That sounds like it's making progress. So now we need to get a little more wiring done. Up here on the front we have the ignition coil and here is our wire that we brought over from the uh, from the points and this is not how it's hooked up currently. I'm going to connect the uh, the points to this terminal on the uh, this coil, run it across and put it on the negative coil of the other side and then we'll run this positive wire from the other side over to this coil. And it definitely isn't how it was hooked up when I uh, got the machine but at the same time the ballast resistor was connected directly to ground so uh, something tells me whoever wired this up didn't quite understand how all this was supposed to work. Both point wires are now connected. This nut on here. Now we need to connect up the hot to the hot side of the coil over on the other side. Of course it's right in behind this nice crossbar where we need to make the connection. So in theory each of the coils now has a hot lead going to it and a point lead going to it. I got the spark tester hooked up. Let's uh, turn the key and see if we see anything. Oh, I just saw a uh, flash. That side's got spark. Let me bring you around to the other side and we'll see what it looks like. Give the key a little twist. And I see spark. Woohoo! Well you know what time it is. It's time to hook those spark plug leads up and uh, squirt a little gas down the carp. See what happens. What I have here is some premixed 50 to 1. Uh, True Fuel is the brand name but uh, several different companies make it. It's essentially a stable two-stroke premixed fuel. Uh, the nice thing about it is that it won't uh, go bad in the carburetor. It won't chew up the uh, the gaskets or diaphragms or anything like that. Carburetor open. Give her a little drink. Bring that back. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> no fire yet. <laughs> fart. Ho ho, it runs. Now I'm giving it a little drink. That 
is uh that's interesting now we need to figure out a way to uh hook this thing up to some fuel let me go grab a fuel tank i'll be right back what i've got here is a, a bit of a crusty old uh outboard motor boat hose the uh the other end's hooked up to a nice little scepter fuel cell this needs new ends put on it anyway so i'm just going to cut the end off of this and we'll see if we can adapt it onto the fuel pump it seems to grab on there let's uh, give it a few pumps and see what it does well we've got uh, fuel leaking out of the uh, return line on the tillotson that tells me we've got fuel up to that point well let's see if it'll run on its carburetor just opened up a can one of the exhaust uh, muffler cans just kind of went pop with that little backfire <laughs> they don't look like they were in very good shape <laughs> throttle mostly closed let me come around the other side where I can reach that governor <laughs> carburetor needs to be uh, needs some TLC the uh, the governor's trying to pull it back to idle and the throttle arm isn't moving easily so I think we have an issue but that's not a terribly difficult thing to deal with it's just a matter of getting the uh, the carburetor number off of the carburetor and then we can order a repair kit for it I think we're gonna call that a success though definitely it's uh, making some noise the backfire blew a nice little chunk out of one of the mufflers and the other muffler doesn't look like it's in that great a condition either. With uh, everybody converting these things over to four strokes, I might be able to pick up a set of uh, these muffler cans rather inexpensively. Not entirely sure, but uh, so far the uh, the engine sounds relatively uh, like a decent candidate. It's really noisy, but then again, it's a two stroke. Anyways, I think we're going to end this one here. We've definitely made some noise. We've answered the question, will it run? And now it's just a matter of uh, cleaning a few things up and getting things working better than they are now. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you in the next mess.